When you're modeling cars, a lot of times you're gonna run into situations where you got a surface which is curved, such as this one right here, and then it's got a curved cut in that surface, such as this one right here that you can see on the side of this car, okay? So this is curved, and then we have a sort of round cut over here. An example of where this is happening, which is a little bit more sophisticated, is this McLaren 720S or whatever the fuck it is. Over here in the front, we got a curve on this surface, and then we got a sort of circular cut. So this is basically the same shit, just a different situation. I'm just trying to give you another example. And the problem is that when you're making something like this, it can be a little bit tricky because you got to pay attention to your topology. When you're modeling cars, topology is extra important. So you got to make sure that your geometry is flowing nicely. Everything's got to be clean. You can't fuck around with booleans and none of that. So let me show you how to do this kind of stuff correctly. And then you're going to be able to apply that to your model so you can keep your shit clean. You can make more professional models, okay? So let's make a little simple hypothetical example right here on the side, okay? With shift A, I'm going to add a new plane. Let's extrude this edge out here. So we got a corner and then we're going to take this edge. Let me lower my camera so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Control B, we're going to bevel that. Give it four segments. Shape value, not one, but 0.5. So it's a nice round curve. And now we have four edges here. If this is a quarter of a circle, this has four edges and a full circle would have 16 vertices or 16 edges. Okay, just in case you want to do this by extruding edges out of a circle instead of beveling a corner. And now we have to cut out this sort of hole right here on the side, let's say, okay. And the way to do that is, well, you can add a circle with 16 vertices up here or a cylinder with 16 vertices. Add cylinder then change the number of vertices to 16. And then we got to rotate this into place and then we got to scale it up and down and all this shit and I'm not sure that I really want to do it that way instead I'm going to just use the 3d cursor as my pivot point then I'm going to place the 3d cursor onto this corner select this segment with p we're going to separate that to a new object by selection because when we do that it immediately duplicates the thing it doesn't take anything away from this model it just duplicates the segment and it creates a new object out of it and now we're going to take that new object and with the 3D cursor down here, we're going to first rotate this by minus 90 degrees around the Z axis. And then we're going to rotate it by 90 degrees around the X axis. So we have this corner here. So now if we go to side view, we can just bring it over here. And this is basically the shape of the hole that we want to cut out here. So this is where we're placing the first part of the hole. And now we are going to use the Boolean modifier, but I need you to pay attention because most people don't know how to use the Boolean modifier. Most people use the boolean modifier completely incorrectly when you're cutting holes with the boolean modifier you can't just use it recklessly like a fool you got to understand what you're doing you got to know about topology you got to understand how this is going to impact your model because otherwise you're going to fuck everything up and i'm going to show you why you're going to fuck everything up if you don't do this right all right so first we got to turn this into an object which we can use to cut something with the boolean modifier okay so we're going to extrude this out extrude this backwards Let's also place the cursor up here so we can extrude this and align it up here. Then we can fill this with F and extrude it backwards. Now it's a solid full object. Let me correct the normals with shift N. And now we're going to use this to cut a hole here with the Boolean modifier. Let's also move this back a little bit further. Select this, add modifier, generate Boolean, difference, use the eyedropper to target this object. Now you can apply this, just use control A so you don't have to go clicking over here. It's a lot faster. And now we can delete this object and now we've got a hole, but this is not good enough because now we cut a hole, but we fucked up the topology. We fucked up the topology because now we got a bunch of n-gons. And if you're new to Blender, if you're new to topology, the reason you don't want n-gons and n-gons are just faces which have more than four edges around them like this one right here. The reason you don't want n-gons is because this is going to cause all sorts of problems. I talked about this in my ebook, so if you want a little bit more information about uh, cleaning up your topology, you can check that out. There's a link below. The reason you don't want n-gons is because it makes it very difficult to work with the model. It also causes all sorts of problems. So it basically completely ruins your model if you don't know how to manage this correctly, right? It makes it unwork unusable, right? It can completely mess everything up. So for example, as you can see right now, we can't really use our loop cut here with control R. It doesn't really work properly. If we extrude this and use alt S to give it a little bit of thickness, and now we want to say select this and add a bevel here it becomes a lot more difficult now we got a lot of selection to do and if you bevel this it go, if you use smooth shading here it gives you all these shading artifacts if you use subdivision surface modifier it's a complete abomination so 
I'm just trying to quickly show you some examples of why you don't want to use uh, n-gons on your model. So now you understand why this is so important, why you have to really understand how to use the Boolean modifier correctly. So now that we use this, I'm going to show you how to clean this up because we can't leave it like this. Let's just undo a couple of steps so we have our original surface here. So to clean this up, here's what you're supposed to do. First, we have to kind of isolate this situation because normally when you're doing something like this, you're going to have other stuff going on on your model. Like, for example, we probably got a surface over here which might or have some other features over here, circle, circular hole or something. I don't know what, unflatten that, delete it. Let's say we got something going on over here on this side, which we don't want to mess up. We don't want this to affect that. So we're just isolating this by making a loop cut here. And I want to have the same thing over here at the bottom. And also, as I always tell people in my videos, when you're doing something like this, you have to keep in mind that you want to have geometric consistency. You want all your faces to be approximately the same size and shape. All the edges have to be the same length. So we can't have something where we have these square faces and then all of a sudden we got all these long faces. That's a problem. We're not going to, this is not going to work too well. All right. So we need a couple more loop cuts down here to turn this into squares. And now we can clean up our geometry a little bit more efficiently. Okay. Let's also bring this over here, join this with J. Now we can start thinking about how we're going to clean this up a little bit better. Maybe this is a little bit too close. So let's push it back Add another loop cut here. And the way to clean this up is you just basically have to connect the vertices in a way that you don't have this weird stuff going on. So for example, we have to connect this and to connect it, we just have to slide this one into place. In this case, we have to keep this curve. Okay. So we don't want to move these vertices. We want to move the other vertices to connect it with the curve or with the circular cut. So place the 3d cursor right here, shift S selection, the cursor. All right. And now we move this vertex over here. So now if we select these two, we can press M merge by distance. Now these are merged into one vertex. We still have some nonsense going on over here. So let's just delete that edge to make sure we don't have any problems. We can join these two with J and then we can slide this up with double G. So we move this up here. Now we're going to go up here a little bit. We're going to slide this one down and just to prevent any weird twisting, let's indeed add a loop cut up here. Join this with J slide this one down with double G slide this one down with double G or maybe you can do something to connect it down here with a triangle or something like that. You can figure out there's different ways to do it depending on what you think is optimal. But in this case, I think I'll just take this and slide it down. It gives us a little bit of bending here, but it's not really going to be a problem. If you want to avoid these kind of large twists, you just need more geometry. So for example, here, instead of using a bevel, which only has four segments, it will be better to use a bevel, which has eight segments. Okay. In which case it would have to use a circle here or a cylinder here, which has 32 edges in total because a quarter of that is eight. So then you can cut this out. Anyway, you understand what I'm talking about. If you have more geometry, it's going to be a smoother curve. So now the way that we clean this up now allows us to use slightly more consistent geometry. So now everything's going to work a lot better. So Alt E extrude faces along normals. Now we can give it a little bit of thickness. Now we can press Control N or Shift N to correct to normals. Now it's a lot easier to select this and add a bunch of bevels here. Okay, so if we want to bevel this now to uh, two segments shape value one, we can use a subdivision surface modifier, we can use our smooth shading. Now everything is going to work a million times better just because we cleaned up our geometry. And this is the right way to create this kind of shape, right? So if you want to learn more tricks like this, guys, like the damn video, subscribe to the channel. This is the type of shit we talk about here. If you want to learn more about modeling and blender in general, check out my blender ebook The link is below. I explain a bunch of this type of stuff. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next one.